Hello and welcome to our podcast for International Men's Day. Today we are speaking about masculinity and the positive impact that it can have on fatherhood and men's lives. My name is Oliver Miller and I'll be your host today. And I'm a workplace consultant for an international and global facilities management and support services business called ISS and specifically working in the financial services sector. Today's talk is one of keen interest to myself, both because I'm a, a father, uh, a son, an employee, a colleague, and a leader within business. And fatherhood can oftentimes present challenges and conflicts within ourselves. So today's talk is about exploring some of those areas and, and really sort of going into to an area about flexibility and how workplaces and, and lives sort of come together. I'm, I'm very lucky in the aspect that my employer and my clients allow me the flexibility to, to meet my family's obligations on my terms. Um, which is I'm supremely proud to, to be able to work for a business that enables me to do that, but also enables me to achieve outcomes for everybody in an equitable way that meets benef the benefits for all stakeholders. So without further ado, it's a distinct pleasure for me to introduce Brian Tan, who's the CEO of Father Centre for Fathering, um, to today's chat. Brian, welcome. Hi, Oliver. Thank you so much for... Uh, this opportunity to to join you on this uh, really important topic. Thanks. To frame today's conversation, we're going to be talking about making positive difference to men's lives um, and their well-being through through fatherhood. So let's get right into it. Um, to give us a, a bit of background, Brian, can you give us some uh, give us the origins and the background for the Centre of Fathering and how you became involved in the organisation? The Centre for Fathering was uh, started on Father's Day in Singapore in the year 2000 um, by two men who just wanted to serve fathers. They wanted to bring the parenting, fathering competences to men who normally would not have uh, gotten it from any school or any equipping centre. How to be a husband, how to be a, a dad. Um, and through the centre, we also run or drive the national fathering movement called Dads for Life. Um, to encourage fathers to be the best dads that we can be for our children simply by getting involved in their lives and by inspiring them whenever we can. <laughs> Myself, how I got involved, I was really a beneficiary of um, the Dads for Life movement and the Center for Fathering uh, programs. Um, and then I had the opportunity to be a volunteer with them and subsequently I got a chance to join them on a full-time basis. But I did that really because um, having been a beneficiary of the programs and the community of support that helped me accountable for who I am as a dad, uh, provided counsel, mentoring um, to help me through the challenges that um, the journey of fathering, fatherhood and my marriage uh, presented to me in my early years. Uh, and that helped me to turn around from being an absent father to a more involved father today. Um, from a marriage that was a... Uh, that in which I was struggling in um, to one that is thriving today. So I felt it's only right that I start to give back and serve uh, the community in Singapore to empower men, to strengthen families. Wow. I mean, that is such an amazing, I guess, powerful story that sits behind it and sort of the journey that you've been on, both personally as well as professionally in that respect. Um, you spoke a little bit there briefly about sort of the, the challenges that you faced. What are some of the current challenges that the, the fathers that you're, you're working with face today? And, and, and how do you help them to approach those challenges? I think one of the biggest challenges uh, we've encountered, or even I have encountered myself, was um, the awareness that our children need us today. Um, they don't just need us to be a provider and a protector for them and to spend time with them on the weekends or during the holidays, but they need us daily. Um, our in, there's a, an involvement and our presence is so important to them because it shapes their beliefs. It um, helps them to um, absorb the values that we want to pass on from one generation to the next. And more importantly, uh, we present that security for them to individuate into they need to have a stable home to grow from. And we all know that uh, why saying, right? Um, the best gift that we can give our children is to love their mother because that forms that stable base for them to 
um, grow and to face the challenges that they have in school and uh, in individuating into uh, adolescents as well as uh, young adults. That's very interesting. There's a um, there's an aspect of that that sort of almost brings in a level of vulnerability doesn't it from from fathers in some respect um which is a really hard thing i think for a lot of a lot of men to cross the barrier with some to even understand perhaps um so how do you kind of coach or sort of mentor your fathers around the, the vulnerability aspect and, and what are some mm -hmm. of the elements or that you think are, are important to highlight with that yes i think i think that presents another challenge um the whole idea of masculinity what is masculinity how do we define it um, how do we um, define manhood? Um, for those of us who are um, very involved and uh, positive models in our own dads, uh, we get it. Uh, for those of us who, are who might not have those opportunities or role models or, or an involved and active father figure in our lives, um, we kind of have to pick it up from um, all other influences and sometimes we don't get it from the, from the right sources. So really what we do at the Center for Fathering is to really form, uh, provide programs, provide platforms for men to come together to have such conversations, uh, to have men across the whole continuum, across the various life cycle stages, to just come together, to share their experiences, to share the, their trials, uh, tribulations, and even how they overcome some of these things. And vulnerability is one of the key ingredients that, that's required for men to come together and to be able to share uh, in that posture because none of us want to be judged, right? I mean, we, we all have this fear of being judged by colleagues, by other men in the community and all. So creating those safe spaces, platforms for men to come together to have such conversations uh, openly, vulnerably helps us to uh, understand our roles, helps us to understand expectations of our wives, our moms even, and even our children um, so that we can better uh, fulfill um, the, those uh, needs and what we found was interesting uh, uh, how we get such uh, safe places going is we kind of need one or two uh, men to start getting into that vulnerable posture sharing their struggles and then the rest of us are able to kind of open up and share and then we realize that you know we're not alone in some of these struggles we're not alone in the gaps that we have for fathering uh, competences. We are not alone in the struggles that we have uh, in our marriage, whether it's communication, whether it's uh, giving our wives enough time and attention and all. So, yeah, it's so vulnerability, it's so uh, key for us. And it's part of masculinity. I mean, some of us grew up thinking that, you know, masculinity is all big, it's all about being stoic, being strong, not showing emotions and all. Uh, I mean, that's how I grew up. That's how my dad was. Uh, um, but yet I realized that uh, later on in life, especially now when I start to see my dad in his uh, 70s, uh, I see a part of him, um, the, the vulnerable uh, part, the real, the human part uh, coming out. And I realized that, wow, this is so important because uh, it's a part of masculinity that's not um, um, shown to us, taught to us, but it's part of it. It's part of, of what makes us men. Um, and I don't want my kids to grow up thinking that you know daddy is a superman because daddy when you cut me when you, when you cut me out I still I still bleed and I still weep um, and they need to be comfortable in that yeah. it's amazing because I mean vulnerability is something that very few people on on sort of within the the, the circles of, of men actually talk about and I think even men between themselves have trouble doing it and so the fact that you're able to provide spaces that enables people to mm -hmm to really go to those depths is amazing. And sometimes it's circumstances, isn't it, that kind of force us to be vulnerable, whether that be through through medical uh, elements or, or emotional or, or familial um, happenings that go on. And sometimes it forces it, but, e but even with that sort of forced circumstance, you almost still have to be open to, to receiving it and actually acknowledging it in that way, don't you? That's right. And it helps to have a community that is able to do that a community that's that's um, able to be authentic um, because i think that's that's another culture that uh, is so required uh, when we do when we deal with men and especially in this pandemic i mean authenticity it's so um so key now right well um, we talk about work-life balance work-life harmony it's actually really work-life integration how do we present an integrated self to our family because our kids are watching us right they see us at work they see us 
uh, in our in our community endeavors, we they see us at home and in the various roles. As uh, for me, my kids see me as a son. To uh, their grand grandparents, they see me as a husband to their mother. They see me as a daddy to them. And I kind of need to be congruent. I no longer have that nice divide where where I can be who I am at work and yet a different person at home. Brian has this. Brian has to be the same Brian that you see in all the roles in um that I that I have to play play out in my life in their lives. Yeah, it's really hard, and I think the the last sort of 18, 20 months for a, a, for many many families has sort of brought that home because there was always quite a clear divide for for many people, both mums and dads, in respect of either going to work and then coming home. And there was always sort of that transitional piece in respect. Um, mm. Having had the I guess the compression of of people's lives and um, with the various ways that we've all dealt with uh, the COVID um, impact. Um, has really sort of created a level of of, of authenticity and, and hopefully of exploration in terms of people and, and, and their selves and, and their surroundings. Um, but it is, it is remarkable to think that, you know, you, you can move from a position of, of vulnerability to authenticity, which almost feels like a growth stage in respect. And so how do you mentor your 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 fathers around sort of, I guess, that authenticness? Because there's always, a, it's always it is a bit of a process that people go through, doesn't it, in terms of learning first to be vulnerable, and then actually that vulnerability moves to sort of a true level of authenticity as such. So that seems sort of like a quite a sequential process that your, your, your dads would go through. Yes, I think one of the benefits that the Dads for Life movement presents to men in Singapore, specifically fathers, is the communities of support and accountability. Because uh, many of us form sub, uh, uh, community groups of dads, uh, whether it's at the workplace, whether it's in the schools of our children, whether it's in the uh, social institutions or community groups that we uh, participate in, in various uh, suburbs and uh, neighborhoods. And when we come together um, as, as a community to live life together in community, that's where we that start to um, share. Um, we, we start to hold one another accountable for the quality of relationships that we have in our marriage and uh, with our children. And that's where we kind of <coughs> are allowed to uh, ask one another, you know, um, what are our challenges? How do we, um, and, and whether we are um, living authentic lives and, and how do we present that? And we remind one another of our role and our influence at home because our kids look to us, right? Uh, they pick up lies, values. They pick up everything from us. My kids don't uh, pick up values by listening to what I tell them. They see it from, they, they, they grasp it from the way I live my life. So for example, for instance, um, we all have bad days. I have many bad days. And there are times when they see the, the ugly side of me. Uh, there are times when they see me hurt their mom with unkind words, with um, um, bad, bad attitude uh, and, and all. And I know that they see it, but um, I'm human. It just, uh, it just comes out. I mean, I, I, sometimes I just can't control my emotions and I just let words come out before I could <laughs> really stop it from coming out. And I hurt someone in the process. And that's where I, I need to, to show my kids um, how I make restitution, how I apologize, how I try to um, seek to uh, reconcile and to restore the, the relationship and even the trust that I, that, that I had broken in that uh, process. Um, they need to understand that uh, life isn't rosy, but yet... Uh, we have agency and we need to invoke it because uh, we can make a change. Uh, we do some things and we see and we bear the consequences of it, um, but yet we pick ourselves up and that's what they need to see because that's how they're going to um, learn uh, resilience in life. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I think active participation in, in one's own life and, and, and in the lives of those around us is, is such an important aspect of um, of, of what we do as, as fathers and, and mothers in respect of, of, of raising a family. Um, and I, and you, I, I agree with your sentiments in, in around that children often observe more than they hear in relation to the way that our activities um, create sort of, a, I guess, a, a future model for themselves as such. Um, in respect of, of, of that, 
there's a level of partnership, isn't there? You know, it, it quite often in families, a partnership between sort of the the, the mum and dad or, or two partners as such. Um, how does how does the Centre for Fathering and, and Dads for Life sort of bridge that gap? I understand that you've had some growth within the organisation over the last couple of years. Yes. Um, having run the organisation for the last 21 years, having run the National Fathering Movement for the last 12 years, we were quite fortunate that in um, just two years ago, we had a group of, uh, we, we managed to partner a group of uh, really uh, wonderful and passionate moms uh, to drive the mother's movement, Moms for Life, um, that works in tandem with Dads for Life to strengthen um, families um, through a close uh, partnership, uh, regardless of the state of their marriage, because we know that every child um, needs, needs access to both their dads and their moms. And uh, in the absence of one, we kind of need to ensure that, you know, the child has access to a mother or a father figure uh, for their holistic um, development. And in a marriage, I think that's one of the ways um, when our marriage thrive, we need to uh, be able to um, pass down the blueprints of what thriving marriages should be to our children. We need to be able to pass down the blueprints of, you know, uh, parenting uh, to our children because they are going to be forming their own families in time to come. And the best way that they can do that is to see us role modeling. So my wife and I know that we have a very big influence uh, in that regard. Um, and we are also mindful about the way uh, we live our lives, the way we conduct ourselves, because our children are picking up all these things and they're going to be the kind of our couples, the kind of our parents that we show them. And specifically for me as a dad, I know that my influence, uh, I have three boys and a girl. So I know that I need to raise my three boys to rest, to, to honor their mom and to respect the women. And I do that by modeling that uh, for them. And I need to raise my daughter to know how she should be treated as a lady uh, mm -hmm. in the future. The way I treat my wife, the way I love my wife, the way, and all it's, uh, it gives her an indication of how she could expect to be treated as a wife and as a mother in time to come. Um, yeah. And so the topic of masculinity, um, I need to make sure that my three sons uh, understand what masculinity is. So my daughter understand what that is uh, so that, you know, in time to come, they, they know what are the acceptable uh, behaviors they know. Um, and they, they know that um, they should not be discriminated against regardless of uh, uh, because of uh, ethnicity, faith, or even gender. Yeah, amazing. I mean, we could talk on, on these topics for days and, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity in the future to, to speak again, perhaps in more depth about some of these topics, because I think the work that you do with the, the Centre of Fathering is just is, is remarkable. Um, and you know, the, it, it's impressive that, that you that there's a community for, for people to, to reach out, whether, whether in need or just simply for advice or even to share and to participate as, as, as you did yourself. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to, to speak with me today. And I wish you and, and your dads and mums the best. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Thanks.